What the hell is going on with Fallout? Hello everyone, what is up? It's me, Ewan from What Culture Gaming, and I wrangled the two biggest Fallout guys in the office in the winner of the you won the Fallout quiz, right? Did you? Yes. I am winner the, of the congratulations. Fallout, Fallout Boy. Pop culture gaming Fallout quiz, Joe Johnston. And the, the guy writer. who actually orchestrated the quiz, I just performed his words <laughs> and took all the credit. <laughs> Mr. Dan Durkin, how are you doing, boys? Not too bad. <laughs> Terrible. 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 There's lots of Fallout news occurring. Obviously, the other month, the Fallout TV show actually dropped and it kind of put Fallout in a big way on the pop culture landscape. People that don't really care about Fallout before this point and now checking out the TV show. But there's a big issue because there's no new Fallout games. What Bethesda have they done? It makes no sense. But damn, there is some rumblings on Fallout 5. So I feel like we should probably try and settle what the hell is even going on. So Microsoft have said that they want Fallout 5 to happen sooner rather than later. And by that, they mean before 2030, <laughs> which is, <laughs> what, six years? But yeah, obviously we've got Bethesda are working on Elder Scrolls 6, and they've got like Starfield DLC in the... <laughs> you had to pause for a second, given yeah, that in 5 the, in was thing. 13 years ago. Exactly. So it doesn't really seem feasible that this is going to get made by Bethesda in the next six years. Like, Because come on, we've not even seen anything in regards to Elder Scrolls 6, so... They mustn't be very far along on that one. And yeah, they, they've they said that, I think Jez Corden has said in a podcast that Microsoft are very aware of the popularity of Fallout currently, because obviously, as you said, the TV show is like the biggest thing in the world right now. So it's kind of like we have to go and play either Fallout 76, which is, or Fallout 4, which is like you said, a nine-year-old game at this point, if we want to get our Fallout fix. So they kind of need to fast track this in a way. The whole world's got Goggins fever. That's and it. And we're not yeah. really capitalizing on it right now. Um, you've also, there's the stuff there, like the, the potential that there's multiple Fallout projects on the go. There was mm -hmm. a Todd Howard interview with Kind of Funny, yeah. which was kind of very vague, but maybe clued us in on what might be coming. Mm -hmm. So there was some documents released from the Federal Trade Commission versus Microsoft lawsuit that was going on when they were trying to acquire Activision. And a big document leaked, and it had in it some remakes, remasters, whatever you want to call them, like their release schedule. So you had Indiana Jones on there before it was actually revealed. So that's how people knew that that one was coming. But also they had a remaster for Fallout 3 in there, and it said for a 2024 release, which probably isn't going to happen at this point. But yeah, Joe, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> on a Fallout 3 remaster... I just, well, as you said, I don't see it happening. You know, Bethesda's games are constantly delayed, constantly announced far too early. Mm -hmm. And I can only see this if 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 it comes out at all being a, a bit of a botch job. <laughs> just in the... the Joe, come on. Well, there there like, could be hope. There could be hope, but this is Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Like, when Bethesda release a game, it doesn't work. True. You know, so <laughs> I, I can just, you know, they, they recently released this next gen update for Fallout 5. Mm -hmm. Fallout 5, Fallout 4, I've got Fallout 5 on the brain now. It's <laughs> because we're all living in the alternate reality where in any other normal timeline we would have had Fallout 7 by now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Fallout 5 was all right, wasn't it, a few years ago? <laughs> um, so, no, the, the next gen update just came out for Fallout 4 and it's apparently broken it. Yeah. You know, the um, <laughs> I think performance mode is the only mode that works properly. Mm -hmm. There's been rumblings here and there of it actually being intended to be like that from Bethesda, but then other people who are like more competent at testing all the like FPS and all that right. have said it's not working, it's broken. Yes. I think the, the one thing that's really standing out to me in regards to both the lack of Fallout 5 movement and also, you know, this kind of the, the botch job that's been happening on the Fallout 4, you know, next gen update. Um, and even in just in regards to like the rollout of Fallout 76, the idea of there being remasters of Fallout 3 and New Vegas, <laughs> how, however many years after Microsoft actually acquired Bethesda and why you wouldn't already. For me, this is a terrible lack of foresight and planning. You know, Microsoft put in all this money into Fallout mm -hmm. with the, you know, it's a huge IP that's probably the second biggest IP that Bethesda have after Elder Scrolls, although yeah. obviously with the TV show now, it's gone <laughs> multimedia. I would argue that um, Fallout so may Fallout, be the bigger one now, So it's yeah. still kind of, for me, it's, it's wild that we're in a situation right now, you know, in regards to like all those gaming trends where stuff is taking forever to get made, that 
no one anticipated the Fallout TV show being a huge success, yeah. and then having no way of signposting people to actual, you know, <laughs> ongoing, well-made Fallout experiences, <laughs> and especially, you know, those people on PlayStation who are now not going to have a new Fallout sequel yeah. to look forward mm. to. It's just a very, very weirdly just kind of, it, it, for me, it exemplifies both the approach that Xbox had over the last 10 years and also Bethesda, where it's reactive rather than proactive. Um, it's just not giving the best impression. Mm. Like, surely people who are on PlayStation, they should be able to play like Fallout 3 in New Vegas hassle free, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with that. And the funny thing is, before the TV show got released, there wasn't a lot of like fanfare and hype surrounding it, I wouldn't say. There was a couple of trailers here and then people were very skeptical and then it's come out and it's been incredible. The only tie-in that they've got with the games is you can get the Vault 33 suit on Fallout 76 and you can kind of pay for like the ghoul's outfit and all that and it's just very leaning on that microtransaction heavy side of 76. <laughs> and it's just, it's bad. It's bad for the players because... They should have, like you said, telegraphed a release, a new release with this to coincide with the TV show. That would have been the smart play, but alas, here we are. I'm curious, Joe, do you feel like Bethesda will be kicking themselves right now? That obviously Elder Scrolls 6 is a game that people have been looking forward to for years. Skyrim was a huge phenomenon, been released across every single platform you can imagine. But do you think there is a little bit of Oh, what have we done here by not moving ahead with Fallout 6, uh, Fallout 5, sorry. Again, it's the ultimate <laughs> timeline breaking in, not moving ahead with that and having to make a new Elder Scrolls when there's all this momentum behind Fallout at the minute. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do I, I do fully agree with that. I think that, that you know, they've, yeah, they've managed to build up such a huge amount of hype at the moment with Fallout. They've done such a good job on the TV show. I know that we both watched it, Dan. We, mm. you know, we did a podcast on it with Sai and thought it was absolutely fantastic. Have you watched it yet? You Not yet. I do have Goggins Fever, though. <laughs> and my doctor told me uh, that I need to actually go watch the Fallout. Yeah, yeah watch it. It's a cure for Goggins just, Fever. It's also got Kyle MacLachlan in it as well. So I need uh, to yeah. actually, like, I'm still going through Twin Peaks. So I need to, like, uh, once I've done that, it'll be the Fallout space and I'll have a great old time because, yeah, Walton Goggins as a cowboy ghoul is, like, my DNA. It's <laughs> yes, it's it's a perfect bit of casting, um, but but uh, yeah, I think having kind of got everyone really excited for Fallout, and then you know s some people are going to go, okay, right, what what's next then? And they, what what do you got for us next, Bethesda? And they go. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy. You can buy the skin on Fallout seventy six, the game that no one likes, and and it's just it's such a disappointment. As you say, twenty thirty is mm -hmm. absolutely ridiculous. You know, by that point, that'll be. Hold on, I gotta do the maths. Here. <laughs> He's gotta that'll do be, the maths. <laughs> my brain's broken. That'll be like that, sixty. No, yeah, that, that'll be fifteen years, 15 years since the last mainline Fallout game. I mean. You can probably call Fallout 76 a mainline Fallout game now because people do seem to quite like it. Um, <laughs> now, you know, it, it's a lot less, you know, the, the reaction to that game is a lot less hostile than it used to be. I think it actually does work. John Carpenter now. loves Fallout 76 as does well. Does he? Oh, so well, that's, uh, I, maybe I should get Fallout 76. <laughs> it's good enough for John Carpenter. It's good enough for me. But, uh, I, yeah, I think 2030 is just absolutely mad. And Bethesda, not only do they, do they release games at such like a glacial rate, they they release games that that, are, that aren't good enough. <laughs> like it's true. And and, and let like me just put it this way: look, like, like I say this, I say they aren't good enough, right? You know, I've had really great times with Bethesda games. Like I've played Skyrim through, you know, a stupid number of times because it's you know deservedly one of the most kind of influential, brilliant games out there. You know, Fallout Four. I'm on another playthrough at the moment, which is really heavily modded, and I'm mm -hmm. kind of just getting to have a load of fun with that game again. Starfield, for the short time I played it, I was having a great time. It was only because my laptop just couldn't run it at a decent pace that I thought, I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait this out. Bethesda's games are good, but they're never they never make a significant improvement each time. Each game that they release feels like a kind of small iteration on the last one. You so know. you're thinking that this this wait for Fallout 5 may actually potentially stand in good stead, that there's enough time to refine those mechanics and, uh, and act on the feedback that we got from Fallout 4 and obviously, you know, Starfield? I would like that, but 
I, I do just worry that they're going to just take the same engine and just <laughs> polish that same engine you know, a little bit more, which they've been a using will, since If there's a way to jank it, they may mm-hmm. jank it. But Definitely. Dan, you've um, there was the, there's obviously been loads of years of speculation and rumors as to where Fallout 5 could be set. Obviously, you know, we had Boston with Fallout 4, mm-hmm. obviously Vegas, New Vegas, and then uh, Fallout 3 that was watched in DC as well, right? So where do you think that Fallout 5, are there any rumors, of, of the, the idea where the franchise could go next? So there's been speculation that it's going to be set in San Francisco because there's like dialogue within Fallout 4 which kind of hint towards that. But for me personally, I want to see it like set in like Texas and I want to see like this big culmination of like western style mechanics and just evolving the gameplay and like the character creation a little bit more so maybe you could play as a ghoul maybe you could play as a super mutant like just changing it up a little bit and having the corresponding like perk trees and character traits like representing these different types of creatures that are in this world because why would you want to limit it to just being another vault dweller again Mm. because they've kind of told a story like a few times now and I just think it would be interesting to see more like expansions on that i think california for me is a really good i know texas would be Mm. pretty fun as well but i think if you were gonna do a more cowboy western infused fallout game Mm. california makes sense because (laughs) yeah you know obviously you know like all the the rich culture in terms of like movies and like pop culture kind of like you know the 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 beating heart of all that comes from there and you also have like the history of the gold rush you have all that like westward migration you know natural kind of disasters that could occur in terms Mm -hmm. of like earthquakes Mm, san andreas fault so california for me makes sense and also because i really want to see a trailer just go are you going <laughs> to San Francisco? <laughs> that would be great. I, I'm very much down for the idea of a Fallout game set in big old San Fran. Imagine coming across the Golden Gate Bridge all, That's all, it. all yeah. post oh, apocalyptic yeah. and stuff. You know, that'd be great. Having to fight your way across the Golden Gate Bridge would be a great, a real great set piece. Alcatraz. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. 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 See? I'm, See? Buy, I'm buying no, this one. No, I'm, I'm, I'm on San Francisco here with you. Is yeah. there anything in particular that you really want to see from a Fallout, new Fallout game, Joe? Apart from, you can't just say it needs to be good. <laughs> <laughs> We've already established that. Is there any specific feature that you really, really would like to see? Um, I just want to see them roll in sort of some of the best aspects of each Fallout game they've had because each one, I think, has had their strengths. You know, I think that... You know, people people hold New Vegas up as being the, the best of the kind of 3D Fallout games. And I think that's because it has the spirit of a Fallout game. It's much more open-ended. You know, you can, you can get a lot more from it in terms of who you align with, who you work mm-hmm. with, how the game can conclude in many different ways. Um, whereas Fallout 3 didn't do that at all. And, and Fallout 3 essentially had like one critical path, um, making it probably the most linear Fallout so far. But then Fallout 4 kind of really improved a lot of the actual, like, mechanics of that game and felt like a really kind of responsive shooter. So I think I, I, I would like them to kind of to keep, that, to keep that kind of gameplay forward element as well because I think they have got better at actually making the gameplay feel less clunky and make it flow much better. But I don't want them to focus solely on that. I want to... I want to return to a, a protagonist who feels like they've got a bit more agency. Yes, I need, I need to, I didn't like the voice stuff. I need to actually no. play my own person. And obviously yeah. they're like, oh no, they've, we've like programmed in like hundreds of names for these characters to say, <laughs> you and not on there. But <laughs> I want to know what all of you down the comments below think about Fallout 5. Are you looking forward to the prospect of that sequel? Are you frustrated with the general lack of Fallout offerings? Let us know down the comments below. But for now, I've been Ewan from What Culture Gaming, joined by Joe Johnston. Goodbye. And Dan Durkin. (laughs) (laughs) And we will see you next time.